Hey folks, this is Mr. Scott, and today's going to be our first virtual environmental science lab. And the lab we're going to do today is electrical circuits, electrical circuits in series. So our goal is this. Each of these PV cells or solar cells that I have laid out in front of you, they have a certain amount of electrical output in terms of voltage and current that they produce. The question we want to look into next is, what happens if you start hooking them together in different configurations? And the first one is going to be a series circuit. Now, I spoke a little bit about this yesterday at the Google Meet, and I've got a quick little video that talks about the difference between series and parallel circuits. But again, a series circuit means this, just by looking at these classic old D-cell batteries. A series circuit means we're going to hook them up in this manner so that the positive to the negative of the batteries are connected in that manner. In a situation like this, there is only one path for electrons or for charges to move throughout this particular series or this circuit. So um, what you'll need to do this lab is this sheet, this lab sheet, which is electrical circuit series. That's been pushed out to you already. Um, I'm expecting that you will go ahead and reconfigure this diagram to put those batteries in a series circuit and the same thing for this diagram here. This is the PV cells. They're the same situation, just a different look. Um, what you're looking to do is make sure you arrange them so that it's positive to negative with one pathway for the electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the actual hands-on portion of the lab which is in here and you're going to go ahead and fill in this data table as we're going along. So what I have for you is three different solar cells. They're all essentially the same kind of solar cell. Okay? And what we'll do is we'll measure the output of each of the solar cells individually by itself. And then we'll go ahead and start hooking two of them together in series. And then we'll eventually go ahead and hook up three of them together in series. And we will measure the output from the solar cells and the combinations of those solar cells with this multimeter, which will tell us the voltage and the amount of amps or the current from each of them. So here we go. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and number these cells and we get them confused. So I already put some tape here with a, a label on it. So this is our solar cell number one. Okay. This is going to be our solar cell number two. Around there. There's our number two. Okay, that's good. And our solar cell number three. There's number three. So what we'll do first is we'll go ahead and just measure what the output is from this single solar cell by itself. I'm going to just put these two guys off to the side a little bit. I've got this guy here. Um, I'm looking to figure out the voltage, the push on that particular cell, solar cell. And so on the multimeter, it's got the V for voltage. That indicates that it's an alternating current. The solar cells, like batteries, give off a DC or direct current. So I'll click that over to voltage direct current, and we'll just go ahead and hook up red to red, positive to positive, black to black, negative to negative, and we'll get a voltage there of that particular cell. So you should be able to see that right there. What you want to do is go to your data table, and on your data table, where it indicates what is the voltage for solar cell number one, you'll write in that value. You'll see it'll change a little bit because there's a solar cell. And so just a slight little change in light will actually move it a little bit. So there you go for the voltage. You got that in there. Next, let's do it. go ahead and do the amps. I do just need to change some cabling on the multimeter. So this is the amount of current that's flowing through or being produced by that solar cell. And there's the value for the current. Okay, and that's in amps. Make sure you use units. Don't forget the units. Okay. So first one's done. Let's go to solar cell number two. Disconnect this guy. Put it off the side. Solar cell number two. Black to black. Negative to negative. If you're actually looking at the output from the cell. Red to red. Positive to positive. Okay, solar cells all hooked up. Let's get the voltage first. 
Shouldn't be too far different from what we had from the first cell because they're the same kind of cells. And I think it's almost exactly the same. I didn't expect it to be that perfect, but. So there's the voltage from the second cell, solar cell number two. Write that down. That's a decimal right there, by the way. So it's 1.276, 77. Okay. You can see it changes a little bit here and there. Now let's do the current. So I'll change the wire on the multimeter. And here is the current from that same cell. A little bit lower than we saw from the first one. And that's the flow of electrons. So that's in amps again. The DC over here to the side just, re just refers to the fact that it's direct current. That would be 0 0.41 amps. Okay, so solar cell number two is done. Now let's go to solar cell number three. Okay, solar cell number three, same scenario in terms of hooking it up. Just gonna go ahead and hook these guys up, negative, negative, positive, positive for the multimeter itself. And just make sure these guys got a good connection. I think so, good. Okay, and let's go to the voltage first. So getting the voltage now from solar cell number three. Okay, a little higher this cell than the prior two that we tested. Not surprising, solar cells are gonna give a little bit different output depending upon the cell itself. So there's the voltage. Now let's do the current for solar cell number three. And here's the current for solar cell number three. And it shouldn't surprise us that it have a little bit more electron flow, added a little more electron push, so it has more electron flow too. So there's the amps for solar cell number three. Record that in your data table. Okay, so now we've got the voltage and the current for each of the cells. Now what we wanna do is this. We wanna start putting these guys together, um, connecting them in a circuit to start changing the total output. I mean, it should make sense to you that if I go ahead and start connecting together, I shouldn't expect to see the same kind of output. What's interesting and fun about this is how you connect them together will give you different values. So in this situation, we're doing a circuit that is called a series circuit. In a series circuit, I like to think of you actually stacking the objects or the items, the electrical devices. And so when we do a stack like this, I like to do just like this. I like to show one on top of the other. And it's going to be negative to positive for the actual connection. So I'll go ahead and connect these guys like so, negative to positive. So now they're in, there's one path that's you've got essentially coming from this black cable, going down through the cell, through the red, through this black cable, through this cell, and out this other guy. So there's one path right now. I'll take this guy out of the way for now. Okay. Make sure you can see it. It's good. Maybe a little bit further down. Now what we'll do is this. We'll go ahead and hook this guy up red to red like I did before, negative negative like I did before there, okay? And so let's see what we've got for uh, a voltage now. So I'll go ahead and click it over to the voltage. This is solar cells one and two connected together. What happens to the amount of push? So there's the push now from the two solar cells, one and two connected together in series, record that voltage. Okay, uh, I think you definitely saw it went up. Now let's go to the current. Okay, now the real question is, do you think the current goes up too? So we'll put this in here now. Let's go for the current. If you look at the current, it's pretty close to what it initially started out with each of the solar cells by themselves. Okay, 0 0.51 amps, there's your current. So that's with two cells connected together in series. Now we're gonna add a third one. So let's get this guy out here. I'll leave this connected just like this here, that's fine. I'm just gonna move this guy up. I'm gonna disconnect this bottom part. I'm gonna add that third cell. Remember if I'm adding cells in series, I wanna make sure I add them so it's positive to negative. There's one pathway for all of the electrons to move or charges to move throughout that particular circuit. And so if I can drag it down just a little bit, maybe you can see a little better here. There's the negative terminal from the very first solar cell. There's its positive terminal connected to the negative of solar cell number two. 
And just beneath that, there's the positive of solar cell number two, negative of number three. And now I just need to connect up here to this last guy to get my final closing of this circuit. Okay, so they're in series, three cells. Let's see what the voltage is. Good chance to go ahead and make that reading. And there is the voltage of all three of those cells hooked together now in series. That's the important part here, they're, they're in series, okay? So the push has definitely gone up. And now let's go over here to the amount of current. And let's see what happens to the current. And if you noticed, that current is essentially the same as we had when we hooked up the one and the two and that is typical. That is exactly what happens in a series circuit. So you've got the data there in front of you. What I want you to do is I just want you to write up a nice little summary of how is voltage affected when you start to put cells in series and how is the current affected. So this is the current here. The previous value we had here is the actual voltage. Okay. And that's a neat little um, characteristic of series circuits in terms of how the voltage and the current is affected. So there's today's lab, okay? So I'm expecting you'll have a, a filled out data table here with units, okay? Um, like I said before, you should have redone and redrawn this diagram to show the cells in series and the same thing here these batteries in series and the last thing I'd like you to do is just give me a summary statement as to how does series circuits affect total voltage and how does it affect the total current and you should be good to go that's our first virtual lab um, we've got another one coming up on Friday and that one will be on electrical circuits in parallel and we'll talk about what those look like when they're in parallel um, have a good day. Be good.